Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome to another session of our Day One and Beyond series. Our today's session is the Day One and Beyond Logging Analytics for Enhancing Performance and Security. So in this session, the Logging Analytics product team will present a roadmap for the journey towards a mature DevOps and CloudOps framework. So they will present real, time, real world scenarios and best practices to get started with actionable insights to secure, optimize, and ensure high performance. I'd like to introduce Royce and Kamar as the main presenters. And with that, I'll hand it over to Kamar to get us started. Thank you so much, Olivia. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Hope you had a wonderful day so far. And today we're going to talk about enhancing security and performance with logging analytics and why it is a journey, not an end goal. It's a continuous journey that we make towards enhancing performance and security. My name is Kumar Varun. I'm the product manager for OCI Logging Analytics Service, and I'm joined by our wonderful solution architect, Troy who will be also sharing some slides and demos. We are going to go through a quick overview of different observability and management services, and then drill down into logging analytics introduction. Then we'll switch gears and look at different use cases and best practices for your environment, which could be hybrid multi-cloud environment, and then follow up with demos. But before we move, this is one example of uh, an IT environment, right? You might be using OIC, Integration Cloud, Fusion Apps, ERP, HCM, OKE for DevOps, Oracle Databases and other databases, Apex and Network. And this looks like a very neat and clean diagram, but it, in reality, this is what it is, right? You have different teams, you have DBAs, you have IT ops, SecOps, DevOps, and uh, developers, management, and a lot of different teams are involved. Are they getting a single pane of glass view of what is happening there. When launching all of these cloud services in OCI or elsewhere, it's super easy. What happens after that, it becomes really complex to actually manage that. There are different teams. And in this group today, we have a lot of people from very different, varied backgrounds, but they're all using these products and services for the business growth, for running their business applications and uh, for their end users, both internal and external. And the important point here, what is who owns the responsibility of managing and uh, monitoring all these different applications? And how do we get to know the single pane of glass or unified view of what is happening in the environment? And to that end, now let me introduce you to observability and management platform services, where all of these applications, whether cloud, on-prem, or uh, SaaS services, they're generating telemetry data from compute, from storage, from network, et cetera, from SaaS services. Some are accessible uh, directly on the compute. Others are accessible from your SaaS REST, REST API endpoints. And uh, some are available from remote access. And we provide Advanced services, logging analytics is the one which I'm going to talk about in detail. Database management, APM, uh, operations insight, which are advanced set of services that enable you to monitor end to end these uh, uh, services, whether it's logs, metrics, or traces. Now, they talking specifically about log management. Log management is not easy. Logs are the easiest ones to collect, and very difficult to manage because when you start adding applications and services, the data volume that is generated can grow exponentially. And then it becomes very difficult to uh, manage and search and also do cost management out of it. And uh, what happens where not just the operation or DevOps requirements are there for logs, you have audit and compliance requirements. It's, it becomes, it very quickly becomes labor intensive. And there are integration challenges when you want to automate uh, and uh, integrate with other applications that you are using in your organization. Logging analytics helps you be uh, visualized and you can create alert on top of those in management dashboard. 
So as I said, we want to make it easy for the people who have access to the systems to ingest data easily by pointing management agent and a, sl and a slew of other methods into logging analytics. And finally, uh, we want to give multiple methods for the people who want who are troubleshooting, who are monitoring these systems to visualize. Log Explorer is one way. And I'll go into the demo on how these uh, uh, graphical interfaces look like. We have next the dashboards where bunch of out of the box dashboards as well as community contributed dashboards from experts like Royce and other field experts they have contributed on GitHub. And then we want to ensure that when you find an issue, the root causes are identified and you can act and automate on top of that. So there are hooks available for automation and uh, uh, creating alarms. Now, this is what I mean when we say that we have the knowledge content that when you point the management agent and discover a database, we know exactly which files to collect. Well, whether it's remote, whether, whether it's file-based, uh, what tables to query data from, and how to parse that data. And it's very important to get into uh, not just one component of it, but a different, uh, but the entire stack. So that picture that I showed earlier, that's probably not very close to reality. In reality, when your environment, when you look at your environment, it's much more complex than that. So what we do here, just to summarize, log analytics, we all the data that we are generating or the application services, cloud services, Kubernetes they're generating, we are able to collect that in a reliable way and a highly scalable way. We have customers who are ingesting more than uh, 250 terabytes of data per day, uh, logs per day for analysis, running more than uh, 30,000 queries and building hundreds of dashboards over there in logging analytics. Then we they are leveraging, they're able to uh, enjoy the benefits of uh, these dashboards and visualizations, which are powered by a, pow uh, a sophisticated query language, as well as uh, uh, very deep log enrichment that we are doing. Okay, so let's start with the, there is no great starting point. That uh, nice circle of IT environment looks great, but uh, uh, for this discussion, I would like to start with Kubernetes, that when you have a Kubernetes environment, or specifically, let's talk about OKE, right? Uh, there are DevOps engineers who want to know not just from the Kubernetes services, but are there any infrastructure issues like load balancer or compute issues, which they may not have full control of? Are they causing an uh, issue in the Kubernetes services or the platform? And what configuration updates cause performance dip? So ability to correlate uh, back in the time and also trying to figure out what changed and how uh, a change in the configuration of an object, let it be a service object or a network object or some custom object that is there in Kubernetes, how, how is it affecting the performance? How is it affecting the security? So you can get uh, insights into infrastructure and performance and platform health in the same in the same, same view, your workload performance, and most importantly, the services and application, which are being exposed to your end customers. So you can troubleshoot in the context of your services and also correlate services, Kubernetes services specifically I'm talking about with the infrastructure that, hey, which Kubernetes services is talking to what load balancer and what is happening in between. So we provide an end-to-end -end view. It's a quick screenshot and we'll go into the demo and talk about it more. But Kubernetes is just one part of it. I will go back to that circular diagram I showed before. I see there are a lot of uh, Fusion Apps users uh, with us or Fusion Apps uh, product owners and users with us. So with Fusion Apps, HCM, ERP, they, it, that's what is enabling end-to-end -end operations or building custom workflows and uh, applications uh, on your side. That's what is powering or fueling the growth of the company. And it becomes very important to ensure security, audit, and performance of uh, all this complex application. So as product owners or as app admins, they want to know how do they can how can they keep track of uh, roles and object changes or privilege escalations? And if they can get an email or very specific role change in a specific region, right? Now all of this it can be enabled, you know, if uh, by using some sort of scripts or anything, but we are making it extremely easy by providing a deep enrichment for the logs that we continuously collect remotely from Fusion Apps. And by logs, what I mean by your sign-in, sign-out information, your audit 
logs from HCM, ERP, o uh, OPSS, etc. all these platform services so that you can keep track of credentials and grant so that uh, to track unusual policy grant events, analyze user behavior, where they are accessing it from, are, have been, there been any users who are accessing from uh, potentially threat IP locations, failed and successful login events, policy alerts where you want to track changes of uh, objects and uh, also uh, role changes and updates that were made by different users. Now, another part of Fusion Apps is the enterprise scheduler where you are running large number of jobs or scheduling concurrent jobs and getting insights into how many jobs are scheduled. Has there been any time degradation or execution time degradation over time? Uh, uh, say last six months that some jobs started uh, six months back and uh, it took three minutes and now it started to take four minutes. It's still not bad, but when the quarter end comes or the year end comes, the data will be so big that uh, the job may not finish in time. So it it's important to keep track of for ad, app admin as well as for auditors on who is accessing what data, the metadata, the, uh, the, the scheduling and how people are uh, uh, using these jobs and scheduling these jobs. So I'll, this is another important area that we want to look at. Now, that's these are two different uh, customizable customizable applic SaaS applications or cloud application. One is in the control of uh, Kubernetes, which is uh, uh, your DevOps, where you're building custom applications. And second, the SaaS apps, which are entirely uh, owned by the service provider. In this case, Oracle, we, have, we are providing this. But what stitches them together is the integration oic you if you maybe if you're familiar with that it allows creating complex workflows not just from uh, saas apps but apps spread across different types of uh, deployment scenarios whether it be on prem cloud or uh, in a third party cloud it doesn't matter whether whether it's uh, uh, oci okay so we have been offering uh, monitoring for Oracle integration for quite some time. There are three dashboards uh, which are out of the box to gain insights into the health for execution time and your overall health of each integration. Now we are going to provide in OIC Gen 3 a transaction level analysis. And what transaction means is that each uh, for a project in, uh, in, in, uh, in OIC, you will be able to track uh, uh, a transaction such as ordering or invoice generation from end to end, which and it might be talking to an Oracle database from a third party uh, sales management uh, SaaS software and uh, Fusion altogether. And when the issue comes, you'll be able to track end to end on what happens. So uh, the question that integration developers, when they're building these complex uh, integrations, they are they want to ensure that. Uh, they can move from dev to prod in a smooth way. Things are not that uh, easy when you are moving from development to staging to uh, prod because of the complex complexity involved and large number of uh, people involved in each team. Then when the deployment happens, they want to find out are there common actions or action types or steps across integration which are causing transactions to fail repeatedly. Not It's not there. It, it's not a firefighting stage yet, but it's all, it helps them to be proactive. So you can have transaction level details as, as well as integration performance. Not just slideware, I wanted to show you in one of the demo environments that I have. And uh, uh, I think as part of the details of this session, there are certain uh, sprints or live labs which are available, which are also based upon this uh, tenancy. So you should be able to get access through the, through the live labs if you try one of those live labs. So now, in this region, I have observability and management and logging analytics as there is a home, uh, log explorer, solutions, dashboards, admin. And when I go to home, and this is a customizable page, which you can use for summarizing all the informations, all the data coming from different uh, environments, as well as uh, uh, whatever logs you are getting here. So in this case, because this is my demo tenancy, I have, I'm using it to visualize, hey, what are the dashboards, uh, being created here and uh, for what people are doing, uh, how many demos are being run here. That's just my use case. But going to Log Explorer from this top left menu, this is the first view that you're going to get here. I'm collecting a lot of different types of logs and this is the Log Explorer BI2-like interface where most of the information uh, 
or most of the use cases and analytics can be done in a drag and drop fashion. So this is, I clicked on the label field on the left-hand side. Okay, so this is what I was talking about that we do deep enrichment. These are the problem labels which can be readily used for creating alarms and alerts. And they are across uh, different types of uh, uh, different types of uh, applications and services. When we say action failed or authentication error, that authentication error could be in your uh, secure logs, Linux secure logs, your uh, uh, application logs, Kubernetes, database, anywhere. But when an issue comes, you want to drill down into that, hey, my user is reporting authentication error, where or authorization error, where exactly it is happening, which tier uh, is it happening on? So we are able to discover, so for example, in this case, We have discovery available for EBS environment where we are able to get the entire topology of middleware, database, compute, end-to-end, -end, and these can be colored based upon the problem priority that I was showing earlier. But I'll switch to a different view where other menu item is the solutions where we have a Kubernetes monitoring solution and uh, uh, you can use the interactive add data wizard to connect your clusters, but I'll not connect the cluster for now in for this session. And I have already connected two clusters for monitoring in this case. And once I show up, I see that all the top level information over here that when they were connected, when they were created, and uh, we have uh, the version, how, what is the current uh, hardware configuration and they look healthy because we heard from them last when, three minutes ago. So clicking on that, uh, getting this kind of a view from a cluster in an easy way is very difficult. When what, so what we are looking at, at is, hey, I have these 10 namespaces, none of them need attention. There are 43 normal uh, uh, events or objects that we see. There are 27 workloads which are running six, across six nodes and 59 pods. And the topology is for namespaces. But I can quickly switch this into, let's say, a workload-based view where I want to look at, hey, which workloads are, are running in which specific node? And maybe it's too small. Okay, which workloads are running uh, in which specific nodes and what is their current status? And here I have the ability to drill down into logs as well as the metrics on the right-hand side are filtered based upon what the selection of the namespaces are here. You can navigate across different types of uh, metrics that we're collecting as well as the logs that we have. You can also expand and correlate them visually in the expanded view. So. We have, a, as, as I said, we have a deep dive session coming in next month we'll, where we'll go into details of each of those. But the uh, point I'm trying to make across here is that getting this kind of a view in a few clicks after you launch a Kubernetes environment or a Kubernetes cluster is a daunting task. And we are making it easy for the DevOps, for IT ops, for cloud admins to get to this uh, easily uh, by deep enrichment, by building, pre-building all of these uh, uh, dashboards as well as uh, analytics view from metrics, logs, and objects for you. Now, on the top, we see uh, a workload view where you get the detail of the workload. Now you see that filters have changed where we are showing here uh, that, hey, there are three deployments running here. In this case, simple search manager is running. And then you have the node view, which is of specific interest to uh, the, the cloud admins or IT or the IT admins and sys admins where you want to look at, hey, are there any uh, node related or compute related uh, issues affecting uh, the Kubernetes services or Kubernetes workloads? And finally, the pod view, which goes into details of uh, each and every uh, pod. In this case, I, since I've selected, let me select more. So all of these uh, workloads or pods are running and they are based upon and uh, across different nodes. And now I can filter just for these nodes. And once I let's say select external DNS, I know this pod is running on a specific node. So getting to the right infrastructure or a service or other way around, that's what we want to make it easy. So that's the Kubernetes monitoring. So now next thing I showed earlier was about uh, Fusion Apps. So going to Fusion Apps, one of the most important things, so this is one of the dashboards that is based upon the logs or audit logs, which is generated by 
uh, fusion apps and we are collect continuously collecting uh, this information and enriching it. Now, in the last 14 days, this is what I see in one of these instances that there have been around close to 60,000 logins from 272 users and 57113 have been successful while these, these many were unsuccessful events. Now, that just summary, uh, getting to this information uh, in and you know at your fingertips, that that's the top level information, but then you want to know that which users are coming from here, where. So we are enriching the access information with geolocation as well as threat intelligence to uh, tell you, hey, here are the users, here, this is the location of your users where they're coming from, and this is natively available. And you can further drill down based upon, hey, who, which users or which city they're accessing it from. And when you look at failed logins, which city uh, are the most failed logins coming from, what has been the trend, and then based upon the failed logins, what, what the uh, well, how many failed logins per user were there. And you can drill down just like this from uh, uh, here into Log Explorer. So let me show you this. There you go. This is the same view that I started with, where we are looking at the anomalies or the user behavior analysis. Now, I can simply click and based upon this, uh, if there are any anomalous activities in this case here, which are identified based upon what these users have been doing, and if there were getting any uh, anomalous, uh, or we are, we are identified any anomalous access uh, based upon their location, based upon the actions they have been doing, uh, and to quickly identify those. Now, we have other dashboards. This is other uh, area that I mentioned earlier around uh, enterprise uh, scheduler, enterprise services, a scheduler service that we have, and that is uh, affecting uh, most of the pillars that we have here, PXCM, because that's a common service enterprise scheduler when keeping track of how many jobs have been, uh, <clears throat> keeping track of uh, how many jobs uh, have been launched, how many uh, errored out, wait successful, and also looking into uh, what were the execution times of those. So here, this job, specifically uh, took two minute 21 seconds and over a period of time it might be uh, it might be uh, degrading in performance so uh, we with logging analytics you can get a complete view of all, all your ess uh, your sign in sign out as well as audit information now there is there have been questions like why do we need it here and that's what is stitching uh, everything when you're running business application that is not just made up of one component, not just fusion, not just database, not just Kubernetes, it's made up of everything. And right now, even though I'm showing a single view for ESS jobs, the key value proposition here is that you can bring these widgets, you can edit these and put them in the same view so that when an issue comes, you know exactly which tier or which team is uh, should be uh, taking this up for resolution. And another point here I should make is that, yes, you can do certain analysis within the Fusion apps today, but let's say for sign in, sign out, that information is only available for last seven days. And uh, you don't want to, and you don't want to analyze last seven months of data for ESS or audit. So we provide a repo, uh, a repository, long-term repository and analytical capabilities here in the context of other applications and systems uh, that you are probably running. And uh, we have active storage. So right now all of this uh, is based upon active storage and you can move all of this data into archival storage for long-term for your auditors for long-term performance analysis and anomaly uh, detection. A good example here is the OPSS where we are looking at event categories like credential management and uh, policy management. And uh, we are able to track uh, uh, in detail on what category of events were executed by different users and what was the corresponding events. And you, we can drill down deeper into that. I'm coming back to Log Explorer here very specifically, let's say, So all of these log records can be viewed in a, a raw fashion view original log content. And also you can do a, a 
parameter or attribute by attribute mapping and comparison on what changed. So uh, one of the key use cases that we have seen from customers is that when a performance degradation happens for ESS jobs, because that's completely uh, owned or managed by, by, by Fusion uh, services, uh, the only control that user has is the change in parameter. So you would like to know a hey, which parameter changed that caused the degradation in performance or uh, failures. The other thing that I mentioned uh, in the in the end that Kubernetes and uh, Fusion apps, ESS audit, as well as uh, uh, security information, that's one part of it. But the glue which is connecting everything together uh, is Oracle integration cloud and with gen 3 we are going to uh, we are providing uh, detailed insights into hey, how many service instances you have and uh, what were the different milestones if you're familiar with the uh, oic insight feature in gen oic gen 2 then this feature is going to be available in uh, logging analytics and with tight integration uh, with uh, oic uh, where you can get into the details of the trackable milestones and what different action types were, and also look at uh, what were the milestone trends across different integrations. Here, I'm looking at uh, nine projects with 15 integrations, and there are total 18 integrations which have been run. Of course, this is my demo environment. Usually, these numbers are in thousands, and we have uh, a series of filters available here based upon your tracking field, based upon your milestone type and transaction ID, uh, which you can use to filter, and then you can drill down into details of uh, how much time each individual step uh, took for an uh, for an integration. And uh, uh, more specifically, you can look at a view like this where, hey, what was the timeline of different steps that uh, happened in a specific transaction? So if you can, uh, if you think that if this is an ERP customer uh, create workflow and there were 18 milestones that were defined with different values, so these, this was a sequence of things that happened in, in those 18 steps. And you can directly drill down from here. And finally, when we are looking at a specific transaction, you can look at the what were the different values of the tracking fields that we have. So, and all of this is a, will, uh, can be done in uh, logging analytics. And you can further drill down from here, as I showed you earlier, into log explorer to slice and dice further. So, now I covered, I think three or four of the use cases in that uh, uh, circular IT environment and then complex environment, but that's just, I would say 30, 40% of the story, maybe less uh, depending upon what type of environment you have. And database as are at the core and Apex application at the core where you're quickly visualizing as well as database, Oracle database is powering all these applications. So at this time, I would invite Royce to share his thoughts on the other components in your IT environment on what should be the best practices that you need to follow and uh, what the owners and uh, users are asking. Royce. Thank you very much, Kumar. And happy to be here um, to share some of the insights about you know, Oracle Apex application monitoring, database monitoring, or the network infrastructure monitoring. Um, what is Apex, right? So some of you might probably use Apex uh, you know, day in, day out. Um, Apex might integrate it with your Fusion Apps data ingestion pipeline or, or connected with the uh, Oracle integration cloud that they visualize the data or you know, input the data into the databases, right? Apex is the world's most popular enterprise low-code application platform. Um, it really enables you to build a scalable and secure enterprise applications with world-class features. Um, it's 20 times faster and uh, 100 times less code. Now let's take a look what we hear from our Apex developers, right? Uh, we know that we have a lot of you know, database administrators in the call today. Um, so you probably come across these scenarios with your Apex developers as well. How to do the end-to-end -end Apex user activity monitoring? or how to get analytics on the Apex application performance or usage monitoring, right? We have Apex monitoring solutions for you, right? Using the Apex monitoring solutions, we can not only look at application activity data about page access analysis, you know, application access stats, error analysis, or user errors. Also, we can look at the user activity side. 
any of the successful logins, any of the failed logins, any of the user and application access correlations, what user logs on what application on what page, how many times? Is there any database logins? Because Apex application is integrated very closely with the Oracle database, right? We also provide the dashboards for Apex database performance metrics, right? Including Apex application, application performance index, any of the top users or top pages, you can enable the tracings and trace the user's activity from browser all the way to the database. You can combine those data with the database performance metrics. And you know, together with the CPU relations, average active sessions, that gives you the full holistic view of application performance monitoring. We'll dive in, into a little bit deeper uh, on the Apex monitoring in the demo. As I said, Apex is closely integrated with Oracle databases. It's a very much data-driven application, right? Um, so then it comes to, up the question of how we can monitor the database efficiently, right? We hear these pain points from our DBAs and from setups that they want to know how to generate compliance reports for the internal or external auditor or how do I track user activities to review user rules or permissions to ensure data storage? We can use Oracle database audit analysis. We collect, harvest the Oracle database audit data across the fleet of databases into the single dashboard that you can view all of your databases security monitoring about unauthorized access detections, anomalous activity detections, sensitive data access monitorings. We can generate compliance reports or audit reports for all of your databases. And we give the, we can give the capabilities through the internal or external auditors to look at the data, right, systematically. We can also use the dashboard to do the user behavior analysis, right, about user activity tracking within the database, right, how many DMLs, how many, how many DDLs has been issued in the database, whether some of those DDLs are not a good idea, and some of those DMLs are, you know, maybe an indicator of the of the issue, right? We can also look at those data from the you know role based access review perspective. All of these is trying to help you to ensure your data governance, so that you can use the data generated from your databases and use those data to make uh, informed decisions about your business and about your infrastructure operation. The Apex application and the database, they are all the critical components to monitor, but underlying infrastructure is, is even critical. App, Apex applications or the, whether the computing instances or the databases or the OKE cluster, they all sit on the OCI network backbone and they use identity and access management services day in and day out. We hear these feedback from cloud admins and SecOps that how to identify the top user activities. How do I get the insights about activity distributions between compartments? We have the OCI audit analysis dashboards for you to do the security monitoring and enforce your security posture. So you can use the OCI audit analysis dashboards to analyze your user activities based on the OCI audit log data about number of the activity um, uh, active users, how many audit records, user activity distribution between the compartments, um, active users per hours, or any of the API actions issued with your tendencies were captured by the OCI audit data. All of these were trying to help you to not slow you down through the, your cloud journey, right? You have a lot of requests coming from the resource provisioning, resource creations, um, you know, uh, policy changes, user creations. We don't want to slow you down. Use the dashboard that can speed you up and to still keep your security posture um, strong so that you can monitor your resource provisionings, you can monitor your cloud API calls, you can monitor any of your policy changes within your tenancy. We also have heard from network admins that they want to track and trace 
source and destination network traffic flows. And they want to analyze the sub-network packet distributions within the VCN. Here we go, we have the enterprise network overview dashboards to help you address these concerns. So from the, we can enable the VCN flow log data at the VCN level, at the subnet level, as well as at the VNIC level. So top down, we can look at the VCN level source and destination traffic an analysis, as well as port analysis and subnet traffic distributions. We can also use that to identify the network bottleneck by looking into the outbound traffic for the source and destination and correlate the outbound traffic for the subnets. We can use the VNIC level details to troubleshoot network latency. We can use the subnet packet rate to identify which subnet has more packets flowing through the interfaces. We can identify each individual cloud resources that has the most flow logs or most traffics going through by using the average packet count by the VNet. By combining both of the OCI order log data and network data, here we come, um, we, we have the security fundamentals dashboards. We hear over and over from our CISOs that they want to quickly identify the security threat. They want to quickly detect the critical security events in the cloud environments. And they want to monitor the, the OCI tenancy based on the Oracle security analytics and monitoring best practices. We have three dashboards for that. We have identity security that covers the identity domain audit analysis. It also covers any of the local user activities if you have any of the service account. We also cover top identity events, such as successful logins, failed logins, any of the user creations, any of the API creations or domain users, or any of the you know, group changes or user changes within your OCI tenancy. From the network's security perspective, we integrated the network VCM flow log with a threat intelligence, which can quickly detect any of the threat IPs accessing your cloud resources. And it has been a very popular feature among our customers that if they see any threat IPs accessing their cloud resources environment, they can drill down and look at, look at those IPs and then look at the Threat Intelligence Center to see the Threat intelli Intelligence Indicator uh, databases to look at these malicious IPs, the metadata, and identify these issues. Maybe you want to you know, lock down, remediate the risk of locking down your secure list or revise your network security group. We also look at secure list changes, network security group changes, or any of the changes to gateway. These are the key metrics that we combined in single dashboard to help you to perform the network security monitoring. We also have a dashboard to deliver security operations to make sure the data flow from logging services to logging analytics is uh, seamless. And we have a widget to detect if there's any service connector errors happens during your log ingestions from logging services to logging analytics. We also cover the active storage usage and archive storage usage within the logging analytics so that you can have a better cost management. Now, let me switch the screen for the quick demo. As I mentioned, APAX application has been widely used for enterprise application uh, development. And we have a lot of APAX developers coming up to us say, how do I better monitor the APAX performance and audit? APAX has its own built-in monitoring features. However, if you want to take a step further to look at the old audit data, to look at the APEX errors across your user namespaces and application namespaces and application usage, you can ingest these APEX log data into the logging analytics. On this first page, you can see here we have APEX errors. So 
we can quickly identify there are eight Apex errors. And by clicking the button, it can quickly take you to what are these errors. And uh, you know they categorize it based on the error messages, such as invalid logging credentials, right? Invalid, um, no data found or password expired or user-defined exceptions. So this can really help the Apex developers or any of the database administrators to quickly identify the issues or security risks in the Apex application environment. Now, let me go back. You can also look at the Apex application error trend based on the Apex applications you have or any of the Apex user errors happening within your namespace. It also breaks down these applications error types and it, it helps you to quickly identify the top errors per the application. It also identifies the Apex patterns from the clustering perspective. So it's, it's using Oracle proprietary machine learning algorithms for the pattern recognition to categorize these log records and then can quickly identify the potential issues. From the user authentication perspective, you can see the number of failed logins, successful logins, or database logins within the environment. You can see the Apex access user by applications and any of the authentication failures or authentication success. You can also look at the application usage. How many workspaces, how many applications, how many users, how many IPs are accessing your application pages and applications. Last but not least, you can combine all of these log data with the metrics data so that you can look at your database, your, um, your Apex databases, CPU utilizations and storage utilization along with these Apex activities so you can quickly identify and troubleshoot the issues. We can also collect the traces from the user's web browser by putting a JavaScript in their user brow uh, web browser, we can capture the traces and um, the spans associated with the user sessions. And we can quickly identify the top pages from the application. And we can see the you know, trace data and the duration data of which page is actually running fast, which page is running slow. Apex application is closely integrated with a database. So database audit analysis is critical within your cloud environment. We have Oracle database audit analysis dashboards helps you to, to look at your database objects within the audit records. It is using the database unified auditing. And then we ingest the, and harvest the log, audit log data inside the logging analytics. You can look at your audit events by databases, and you can look at the audit events by users. We see some service accounts. We can also track the user account. You can see the distribution of the audited database actions, such as the DML actions by databases, how many inserts or updates, deletes, or log table. Or oh, maybe log table is an area that I want to take a quick look. Is that something wrong with that log table? Or we can look at the transactions or sessions or system control actions based on the databases. You can look at the top 10 administrative actions within your databases. And this covers all the database flavors. It can be cloud databases, it can be Apex databases, it can be Exadata databases. You can also look at issue and duration analysis. So we have the problem priority labels assigned to every log record. You can see here, this is the uh, grant actions on the Oracle user and it is assigned at the medium. So if there's any label, any action was detected was a critical that will show up as a critical label here. Now, let me switch the gear about to take a look at, you know, security perspective. 
From the OCI, we have OCI audit analysis. So you can look at the user accounts, uh, all the records, user activities. So each individual records represents the actions within your OCI tenancy. So you can look at your APIs, uh, API calls and API paths to identify who access what API endpoint or with what cloud resources quickly. We also have enterprise network, which is another important critical component at the infrastructure. So we can look at the data from the VCN level, or we can look at the subnet level about the packet flow through the subnets, or even drill down deep further to the VNIC level to look at the flow logs as well as average packet count by the VNIC. Now, let me switch the view to the CISO by looking at identity security dashboards. Identity security is critical within the you know, OCI or in any of the customer's cloud journey because you interact with identity day in and day out, all the cloud resources that interact with identity services and any of the users interact with identities. So we have the identity security dashboards for you so that you can look at any of the user or services, you know, how they interact with your OCI and with the other cloud resources. So we have a successful logins, fail logins, password reset, user creations, domain users, and group changes. We also have um, identity API call analysis tool so that you can quickly identify um, any of the you know, API throttle links, 400 errors, or any of the specific path, access path um, from any specific source IPs. By looking at these data, it helps you to quickly identify which user or which API endpoint is facing throttle links or rate limiting. Within dashboards, we also believe API key creation needs to be closely monitored. Any of the service account users, if they create any of the API keys, you or our CISO or security SecOps team, they need to know that. So the widget can really helps you to quickly identify who created the API keys in your environment and what actions you should take for these activities. You can look at expand and to look at the details of this API key information so that you can keep your secure, your environment secure. Looking at the network security, the most popular widgets that we have among our customers is the threat IPs. When you when there's any threat IPs accessing your cloud environment, you will see a trend going up and the count is going high. So you can look at drill down and look into the thread IP information. And so that it can it will link you, take you to the thread intelligence database. And so that you can look at all the thread IPs metadata to identify where they're coming from, what's, what's their geolocation, what malicious type um, they are using to attack your cloud resources. So with that, you can actually, you know, remediate your security risks by logging the secure list or network security group. We also have a security operations to give you to track down your cost management better by looking at the average active uh, active storage used within logging analytics and archive storage unit used in the logging analytics. With that, um, that concludes my demo, and I'll hand over back to Puma. Thank you so much, Royce. And we covered a lot of ground today. And uh, I bring you back to this simple diagram, which doesn't look as simple, but I wanted to quickly go back to the poll question. And most of the participants agreed that it is the responsibility of all technical and business teams with the right access to the observability tools to ensure performance and security. And at this point, you must be wondering, where do we start? This is a circular diagram. And what should be the first step? So I. When you want to start, there is no uh, good or bad point. Whatever you are most in, whatever area you are there, you can start your logging analytics journey, journey quickly uh, from whether database, OKE, or Fusion, or OIC, 
uh, using the add data flow that I posted in the chat window. Now, but to get the point towards the end is for ensuring performance and security, it is very important that for business growth that performance issues are resolved quickly that we have seen. And in this complex environment, where do you start? That's what logging analytics is providing you, including the ability for you to identify root causes quickly so that you can avoid future incidents. And then everybody should have the right access and easy to use uh, tools for end-to-end -end visibility. Now, we covered a lot of ground today uh, to give you a glimpse of what different components are and how, and the idea here was to uh, give a preview of what our largest customers are doing, how they are managing the complex environment where they are sending hundreds of terabytes of logs per day. And uh, we are making their life easy by ensuring that all users have access to the logs and uh, alerts and dashboards in the same way. So here are a few next steps, but we have uh, other sessions which are coming up that you may want to register that we'll highly encourage you to register. There is a, a session on uh, uh, May 29th. Uh, for observability insights, and then a deep uh, session on uh, logging analytics on June 20th. I'm sharing on my screen, and you'll get all these slides uh, uh, in the email where you got the registration link. And finally, uh, day one and beyond is uh, has multiple series, core series, uh, hands-on series, cloud native launchpad, uh, cloud security series, and what's new. Uh, so feel uh, to keep track of those emails and. Uh, we would love to join us for more of these sessions. And that concludes my presentation. Over to you, Olivia. Great. Thanks, Kamar and Royce, for today's session. Our next session will be navigating the impact of cloud on June 4th at 10 a.m. Pacific. So this session will cover op operational considerations when migrating to the cloud and help better understand organizational alignment best practices for successful cloud adoption and execution. So we hope to, to see you all then there. Thanks, everyone.